Welcome congratulates Dominica on impressive strides since independence. Renewed focus on the implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy. The region gets 9.5 million US dollars in disaster resilience funding. I am Tusankin English Francis with the details of these and other stories in the CARICOM news time for the week ending Friday 1st November 2019. Thank you for joining us. We start this week's episode extending congratulations to Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. These countries had independent celebrations over the last few days. Dominica is celebrating this year's anniversary under the theme Saluting Resilience and Rejuvenation, two years on. The CARICOM Secretary General said this speaks to the country's ability to defeat adversity and the continuing and unwavering determination and commitment of the government and the people to overcome the traumatic devastation of successive natural disasters and to seek to build the world's first climate resilient country. Dominica has been recovering from widespread devastation caused by Category 5 Hurricane Maria in September 2017. Before Maria, it was impacted by Tropical Storm Matru in 2016 and Erika in 2015. Challenges associated with the implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy will be in focus when CARICOM trade ministers meet in Georgetown, Guyana later this month. From November 18 to 19, the 49th meeting of the Council for Trade and Economic Development will review CSME's administrative procedures, competition law and policy, trade and services and agriculture. They will also look at matters concerning external economic and trade relations. Quoted officials met last week, Tuesday to Thursday, at the CARICOM Secretariat headquarters to fine-tune the agenda of the meeting. On the afternoon of November 19th, a joint discussion will take place between CARICOM trade ministers and ministers of health. The Council for Trade and Economic Development will meet the Council for Human and Social Development on intersecting trade and health issues in the fight against non-communicable diseases. CARICOM Ministers of Health at the 28th COSOD in Washington, D.C. late October mandated that officials pursue very specific priorities, which they have previously supported, to align trade considerations with public health. Program Manager for Health Sector Development, Dr. Rudolph Cummins, told CARICOM News Time about those priority issues in a recent interview. Um, two of them, which are noteworthy of mention here, would be a declaration for the elimination of trans fat, which have mm -hmm. no nutritional value, but are very commonly used in oils and fats industry to solidify products. So margarine has trans industrial trans fat in it. And there are other means of achieving that presentation. And so they, they are of the similar view to the technical uh, experts in the area since this the industrial transfats are it is known are implicated in blood vessel diseases mm -hmm. um, in particular in cause of heart attacks that we should try within two years to eliminate those. He said the second priority that will be presented to trade and health ministers is the control of sugar sweetened beverages. We will put to the joint meeting of the COSAD and COTEL the proposal which has come from the COSAD, from the 37th COSAD, and that is to have the countries look towards implementing these sugar sweetened beverage taxes as means of, in particular, for reducing the consumption of what we colloquially call in the Caribbean soft drinks. Um, because it, it is one of the known contributors to the high rates of obesity we have in children. Mm -hmm. in, in other countries, um, they have, in fact, I, I know the trend that in all state-supported schools, they have um, had the vending machines removed from the school, so 
children do not have easy access mm -hmm. to, to these um, sugar sweetened beverages for the time that they are at schools. And there are other measures which are being taken, for example, preventing the sale of sugar sweetened beverages in hospitals and other public, um, in, in, in other public spaces that are state owned. Assistant Secretary General for the Directorate of Human and Social Development, Dr. Douglas Slater, reminded the officials that CARICOM led the global community in bringing attention to the onslaught of non-communicable diseases on public health. Pointing out that progress in achieving gains have had room for improvement, he underscored the importance of the joint discussion. It is fair to say that we have not progress as we would have liked to over the years and uh, I think this will be an opportunity for us to step up the pace and uh, to do so really requires a joint effort and it is for this reason that we have worked assiduously over the past months if not years to pull this joint co-sorted meeting. Assistant Secretary General for the Directorate of Trade and Economic Development, Mr. Joseph Cox, said the joint quartet COSAD will seek to achieve synergies towards meaningful conclusions. It is not, it's not, we're not going back to the age-old period of, of prohibition, but what we're looking at is how to effect real balance in lifestyles to avoid some of the, the challenges, some of the health challenges, the costly health challenges, the diabetes, the uh, heart attack, stroke, etc., etc., that we all know about. So it's really about how do we get that type of synergy so that we can really drive this process to a, a meaningful conclusion. It is pointless. I mean, we have seen this in the past where sometimes well-meaning people from both sides of the aisle continue to speak at each other. Now is an opportunity for us to really unite our efforts, speak to each other, and through that spirit of cooperation, effect the outcome that we really want to achieve out of this celebration. Representatives of Barbados' private and public sectors, youth, media, labor and non-state actors as well as regional institutions had an opportunity to engage the CARICOM Secretary General and senior officials on the CARICOM single market and economy. The discussions took place on Monday the 4th of November during a regional stakeholders consultation on the CSME in Barbados. Prime Minister Mia Motley, the lead head with responsibility for the CSME within the CARICOM Quasi Cabinet, led robust discussions also on the CSME in the afternoon of the 4th at a town hall meeting at the UWI Cave Hill campus. She was accompanied by the CARICOM Secretary General, Ambassador Erwin Laroque. The forum was broadcast live around the region via the Caribbean Media Corporation, CMC, UWI-TV, and it was streamed via the CARICOM Secretary's Facebook platform. The regional stakeholders consultation on the CSME was conducted through collaboration among the CARICOM Secretariat, the Caribbean Development Bank, the Government of Barbados, the uwi Cave Hill Campus, and UWI-TV. CARICOM and the United Mexican States on Wednesday, 30th October, reaffirmed their commitment to strengthen decades-old ties. Relations between the two parties, which was formalized in 1974 with the agreement establishing the CARICOM-Mexico Joint Commission, was reinforced on the 30th of October, 2019, with the accreditation of His Excellency Jose Omar Otaru, new ambassador of Mexico to CARICOM. In his remarks during a brief ceremony at the headquarters of the CARICOM Secretariat, CARICOM Secretary General lauded Mexico's support to regional development. Of the concept of vulnerability. CARICOM greatly appreciates Mexico's understanding of the challenging challenges facing our member states. We welcome Mexico's willingness to advocate on issues of utmost importance to us and other sins, and to reflect CARICOM concerns at the level of the G20, the OECD, the World Bank, and the IMF. With these remarks, Ambassador, I wish you a warm welcome to the Caribbean community and a most successful tenure. I can assure you of my support and that of the staff of the Secretariat as we work together to make even stronger the ties between the Caribbean community 
and the United Mexican States. I thank you. Okay. The newly accredited envoy said international cooperation, particularly towards Latin America and the Caribbean, occupies an important place in his country's foreign policy. Excellency, there is much interest in developing the links between Mexico and CARICOM in areas such as reinforcement public, uh, re reinforcement public uh, climate change, security, and organized crime. He committed that Mexico will work to consolidate an agenda with CARICOM to share experience, good practices and knowledge of Mexican institutions. The outgoing head of the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, Dr. Kenrick Leslie, is pleased that the center has provided strong support to the CARICOM member states on climate change related challenges. Dr. Leslie who led the Belize headquartered institution from its inception in 2003, is scheduled to admit office on the 5th of January next year. I have been extremely privileged to see, as I said earlier, in the idea of a regional institution to address climate change. My colleague, Dr. Trotz, along with others, such as Dr. Nurse in Barbados, uh, Mr. Peter Springer and others, Mr. Carlos Fuller, they saw the need to get a regional institution and brought that to the heads of government. I was not involved with that part of the center. However, I was asked to move it from a concept to an operation. So back in December 2003, I returned to the region and since then have been involved in the development and operationalization of the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center. We started out with just one member at that time and today we have a staff members of 45 specialized where we have a number of young people, highly qualified. And this is one of the advantage that we have and we can offer the services to our region. The Deputy Director of the Climate Change Center, Dr. Ulrich Trotz, has praised the foundation laid by Dr. Leslie. Uh, a word of appreciation for really having had the privilege to work with uh, Dr. Leslie to see a dream that we had years ago come to reality. He did bring reality to our dreams because as he would tell you when he saw the uh, plans that we had for the establishment of the center, and I could say this in public, he asked us what were we smoking? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he took a very practical approach and he said built from one person to what we have today. Belizean Dr. Colin Young will be the center's new executive director from the 6th of January. The Caribbean Community Center for Climate Change was established to support the people of the Caribbean as they address the impacts of climate variability. This through the provision of timely forecasts and analysis of potentially hazardous impacts of both natural and man-made induced climate changes on the environment. Doctors Leslie and Trotz will join us in upcoming programs to discuss some of the center's success stories in the region. The region's ability to respond to natural disasters and build its resilience is expected to improve as the U.S.-Caribbean Resilience Partnership advances. The working group of the partnership, which was launched in April 2019 in Miami, had its first meeting in Bridgetown, Barbados on October 23rd and 24th. The meeting concluded with the U.S. committing 9.5 million U.S. dollars in disaster resilient funding for the region. The working group comprises representatives from the United States, 18 Caribbean countries, the Caribbean Disaster Management Agency, the Eastern Caribbean's regional security system, regional universities, and other non-governmental partners. The U.S. State Department said the group discussed plans to improve resilience through initiatives including a 5 million Caribbean-wide energy initiative to reduce electricity outages resulting from hurricanes and floods. 
A multilateral program to improve regional capacity for hurricane forecasting in the Caribbean Sea and tropical North Atlantic Ocean is an important component of the partnership. The development of marine renewable energy will be in focus when energy and technology experts meet in Grand Anne's Grenada on the 6th and 7th of November at the Radisson Beach Resort. The CARICOM Secretariat, in collaboration with a number of organizations, will host the Caribbean Marine Energy Technology Forum to explore a range of topics in the field. Experts are expected to brainstorm cost reduction strategies for cutting-edge marine sustainable energy technologies within the region. The forum will be co-hosted by the Government of Grenada, the Caribbean Centre for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, SICRI. Other partners include GIZ and the SIDS Sustainable Energy and Climate Change Resilience Initiative, SIDS DOC. Caribbean Energy Month started on the 1st of November and will be launched on the 6th of November in Grenada. For more stories, you can visit the CARICOM news site at today.caricom.org or the CARICOM website at caricom.org. Like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.